Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. I'm your host Steve Coulter and I'm joined on the couch as always both my co-host Sally Sanders. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you and Sally uh, greed for lack of a better word is good. Is good. We're talking about Wall Street the wacky world of the finance industry. We're inspired by inspired the Inspired by, of big course, short. Big Short starring Christian Bale, Ryan Gosling, Steve Carell, Brad Pitt, and a litany of other great uh, actors in that movie. And that one's nominated for Best Picture. Yes. The Oscars are 10 days away. And it seems Countdown. like this is the best competition for The Revenant in that Best uh, Picture category. Well, I might argue that um, Spotlight is, sure. is also right up there. Yeah, but Big Short has been kind of gaining momentum ever since its release. And yeah. It seems yeah. like it has the ensemble that would be would, would be able to knock it it's off. It's a little stronger ensemble, it feels. Yes. But maybe it's just because they get to be a little more flashy than the people in Spotlight. And were. of course, you got to be flashy when you're doing a Wall Street movie. There's plenty yeah. of flash. You got. Well, let's let's go <laughs> through the, the the litany of. of I continue uh, to replace Mark Schumann here on the couch with the, the key ingredients. Yes. The first one I have is anxious. These are people that are very worried, mainly because they're dealing with millions and billions of dollars that could be lost in an instant. Yes. And they're also very anxious because a lot of the time they're doing a lot of drugs, as you see with Leonardo DiCaprio mm -hmm. and The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, and so there's a lot of panic going on. Mm -hmm. And there's, a, you know, the mind is not exactly stable. So you have a lot of anxiety and that's definitely a key ingredient to these movies. You see it with Wall Street, the Michael Douglas movie. Picture Christian Bale hammering and away. You know what? I have American Psycho. Set. Yeah, I had that <laughs> one queued up for later. But yeah, of course, he is the most psychotic of them all. Yeah. American Psycho Patrick okay. Bateman. Um, the next one is Ambitious. These are people that are, it, they want to go as high as the ceiling. They want to, they want to fly into the heavens and they will stop at nothing. Yep. So nothing can get in their way, nobody, and they just, they're on a complete collision course with themselves, basically. So it's really... Eventually, yes. Yes. It, if they don't, if uh, the police don't catch them, they'll catch themselves, basically. They're, they're going to flame they're out. They're their own worst point. enemies, yeah, yeah. Too ambitious. And their desire for success is unmatched with any other characters in any other films. Um, again, you see that with Leonardo DiCaprio, you see that with um, Gordon Gecko, Michael Douglas. Yeah, yeah, you get Patrick Bateman. All these characters are so famous because they're so ambitious and they're just full, full of greed. And the last one is you got to be adaptable. These are people that are flexible and they think on the fly. And you see that a lot with the Ryan uh, Gosling character in the big short. Oh, yeah. He is he's oh, in yeah. the gym, he's pumping weights, he's yelling at people, he's in the bathroom, he's kicking down st stalls, he's. He's kicking guys that and he works with. And he shoes with. As, as, oh, as needed. Oh, yeah. yeah he's needed. at dinner parties, and he's just, he is all over the place. He's yep. completely, he'll say anything and do anything to make sure he ends up well, making some Gordon money Well, Gordon Gecko, that name wasn't chosen, I, I think, idly. I think oh, no, Gecko yeah, is, is... It's very on the surface yes. level. Yeah, he's a chameleon of sorts, and he's changing his skins and yeah. all the time. So those are the key ingredients. you got people that are changing rapidly, people that are desiring success, and then, of course, people that are constantly worried about how people view them and how they view themselves and you see that again a lot with American Psycho Patrick Bateman's whole world is built on this exterior shell he's mm -hmm. got the facial masks he has the suits he has everything that's designer up from his socks to his boxers to his clothing to his hair to his look his facials so yeah it's a very uh, designer world and of course when you're you know dealing with people that have that much money you've got to kind of put on a front and act as if you know what you're doing because they're not going to give you their money unless they think you're worth it. Right. And of yeah. course, uh, we're all we're on the topic of American Psycho. Christian Bale is in the big short and he does a complete 360. He doesn't care at all about how he looks in this movie. He doesn't care about <laughs> how he looks, but he really cares about people believing what, what he knows to right. be true. Yeah. And you can see his frustration is, you, you really feel his frustration when people just don't get it. I've always thought that American Psycho is his best performance, but he really knocked this one out of the ballpark. I he think did. he did such a great job with it. And of all the movies that I saw this year, you know, Room left me thinking, I think, 
the most days after, but like weeks after, I found myself really thinking about the big short, and I think that was because of Christian Bale's character. He really has, he hit something emotionally in that movie. He that, anchored it really yeah. for me. And then yeah. of course, the, you know that what's great about the big short is my, I think my favorite scene in it is when uh, Carell's guys go down to Florida and they're talking with the yeah. real estate agents and you have none of the big actors. You have no uh, Gosling, no Carell, no Bale, no Pitt. And those guys do a great job down in the Florida sequence. I think they perfectly kind of captured what led to this financial crisis. Yeah. You've got the guy in the house in the mansion home, and he's just like, well, I've been paying my rent. And they have to tell him, well, basically, you're going to get evicted because your landlord hasn't been paying his. It's interesting how these things cycle over yep. and over through the, through the movie world. You can look back at previous crises and, and the movies that developed out of it. Um, as I was riding over here in, in the car, there was an ad on the radio for uh, flipping houses. Oh, really? Yes, yes. <laughs> Invest in my, in my house flipping operation. I was going to say, it's very operation. timely for our conversation today. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, was, I, I started going through some of the, the really old uh, films because okay. that's where I like to start. It's what a what kind of homework can you give me? Because I have a lot well, of ones that are more modern. Well, this one you know, It's a Wonderful Life, which oh, is sure. just a classic explanation of how a small bank worked yeah. back in the day. That's a good one. I wasn't even thinking that. I was thinking more Wall Street when I yeah. was doing my research. Yeah, but yeah It's a but Wonderful Life. Getting people, that was a film that was to get people to understand how their banks yeah. really worked. And there's the scene where he has the money and they're about to go on the honeymoon and he comes running back into the bank and he starts giving away his honeymoon money. Yeah, to, to, make, all the, to make Just up to the make sure. And then he, what does he have, two bucks at the end of the day? Something like that. Yeah, that's such a great scene. Yeah. That's but, one of the best scenes in the movie, I think. Well, and then at the end when everybody comes with their money to, sure. to bail him out. Oh, he's the richest guy in town, of course. Yes. they got to bail out George yeah. Bailey. Um, so what are kind of the challenges that these movies face, do you think? They're kind of depicting people that are not likable. Obviously, you've got Potter in that movie. Yeah, uh, Mr. Potter, Lionel Barrymore. Was. There's so many people that I've talked to about The Big Short, they're so put off by it. They're like, really? I don't want to watch a movie about the financial industry. And so I think that's kind of the battle that these filmmakers who I make these movies have, have to, to have, overcome. Yeah, they have to have fascinating characters. And one sure. of, the, one of the, the movies that I thought of immediately was The Godfather. Yep. I mean, that's, that's a business, a family business, yeah. perhaps. But... Um, <laughs> He's dealing that with is this, the business. <laughs> I mean, he's dealing with, with all of the kinds of problems that a legitimate businessman right. would have. And how to expand, how to control your, your product. The competition. Yeah, yeah. How to deal with the competition. And so the reason that, that we, we turn to that movie is, be, well, first of all, it's such a beautifully made movie, but the characters are so compelling. Right. So I think that's what a, a and the filmmaking has to be innovative as well as the characters. You see that with the big short. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam McKay really went out of the box. He has, you know, the celebrity guest cameos, yeah. which is a nice touch. Yeah. And he keeps it light. And he had Ryan Gosling, um, you know, breaking the third wall. Right, of course, and talking, talking to the audience. Yeah. yeah, that was great from the get-go. Yeah. And the way that it's narratively told, the structure of it is so unique. But you feel, uh, do you feel kind of more recently that these movies have kind of gone towards the comedy end to attract new audience members well, they, that might be otherwise skewed they, not to go see it? Because yeah, of the they topic. do kind of go over the top. Um, one of the ones that I, I was thinking about, too, was, um, are you familiar with Thank You for Smoking? Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. I that's mean, another that's one that it, it could be more serious, but it's actually more com comedic. It's hysterical. Right. It's hysterical, but it, it's Aaron know, Eckert, right? Aaron Eckert plays yeah. the, the, lobbyist the lobbyist for the tobacco for, industry, yeah. and um, he's surrounded by the other merchants of death. They call themselves the Mod Squad. Right. Um, and uh, it's a great illustration of how lobbying works and, and how gr giant corporations. Is J.K. Simmons in that too? Or he no? isn't. Okay. He's, he's, That's he's a good one. Um, Aaron Eckert's boss. Right, yeah, he's great. Yeah. William H. Macy, I think, is in that too. It's got a great cast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Another yeah. ensemble movie where you kind of get a bunch of different actors that are sinking their teeth into these characters. Explaining an aspect of, of sure. business. Yeah. yeah, that's not exactly something that you'd want to go see a movie about, but it's told in a very light way. Yeah. That can attract a multitude of audiences. Exactly. So what are some of your other favorites, uh, kind of going into the Wall Street financial genre? The Wall Street financial genre? Well, um, I would say my absolute favorite is um, Inside Job, which is actually a documentary. I had that on one on my list. Yeah, there's a lot of good documentaries. You have Enron, too. Yeah, The Smartest Guys yeah, in the Room. Yeah, that one's one of my favorite. That's Alex Gibney. He's a fantastic... Uh, documentary filmmaker. He's doing. He does great, great work. And Margin Call. Margin Call. Yep. That's Jeremy Kevin I Spacey. Or yeah, no? Jeremy Irons, Kevin Spacey, 
it's deciding on whether or not you're going to reveal the... the right. Yeah, I remember seeing that movie, and I, it was, like, similar to other movies that are in this genre. It's like a lot of the terms go it's over your head. It's right at the beginning of, of the, the, right. the financial breakdown. You can breakdown. see the dominoes kind of getting yeah, yeah. lined up and ready to fall. And they're trying to get out before it, it does, and, and they have to do it by being dishonest. What about The Wolf of Wall Street with Leo? Did you like that one? It, it's a bit much for yeah, me. Yeah, too know? much partying. Yeah. Too many quaaludes. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, it's, it's pretty accurate. Oh, yeah. It just goes to show that these guys will push themselves to the farthest, you know, possible boundaries to, you know, either succeed in his eyes. He thinks he was succeeding, but really he was breaking down his entire company himself and his, you know, relationship with his wife. Yeah. It's sort, of, fool it's sort of, and if you go back to the previous cycle of excess, um, mm -hmm. The Bonfire of the Vanities, which was a Brian De Palma film that was based on a Tom Wolfe novel. And De Palma is a great director. Yeah, this is Tom Hanks as a, as a, um, a captain of industry who's, whose mistress is driving when they hit someone and kill him. And the dominoes start to oh, fall. Oh, so he's a little that. bit of like a fixer, so to speak, or no? No, no, no. He's just trying to pretend it didn't happen. And, oh, and, but, okay. But it's it's also about the um, the news business and how people start tracking down um, this this incident and linking it to him, and everything falls apart. He ends up basically on the street. So it's a drama. It's a <laughs> very funny drama. Okay. Yeah, it's a great book too. Right. And yeah, time and time again, the genre does attract a lot of serious filmmakers, which is interesting that Adam McKay, who's been doing a lot of comedies, mm -hmm. uh, did the big short. Because, I mean, you see uh, Oliver Stone did Wall Street, Scorsese did Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. And so time and time again, you see Mary Heron is actually kind of the outlier in that she's a, she wasn't exactly a dramatic filmmaker and she made American Psycho. And she did a great job with it. Yes. Stone yes. wanted to make that, actually, believe it or not. Um, one on my list is Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, the oh, Alec yes. Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah, that's a classic. Jack Lemmon. That one's a really good Al one. Al Pacino. Yep. Um, yeah, that's Kevin Spacey's in that too. Yes, he is. Yeah. You can, you can kind of see these actors reappear and reemerge in these yeah. ones. And that's a stage play. It seems sure. It seems very confined when oh, yeah. you watch the movie. It's right there in the office, like almost yeah. the entire movie, right? Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much my entire list. Really? Got the Wall Street sequel, which is terrible. That's a must avoid for people that are mm -hmm. watching. Do not go watch that movie. Watch the original. Do not watch the one with Shia LaBeouf. I thought that was an atrocity. That was probably one of the worst movies I've seen. Another, another one that I came up with that was sort of an example of, of the, the newest industry, which is um, the social network. Yep. That's okay. a really good one so about greed, about ambition. About greed and about, about creating something out of nothing with not very much. Right, and, it's and all kind of working up the ladder. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Mark Zuckerberg kind of coming from nothing because the one show we wanted to talk about in this movie topic was the show Billions that's on Showtime right now. Yeah. I highly recommend that to our viewers. That's with Damian Lewis and Paul Giamatti. Uh, it's five episodes in, and it just throws haymakers left and right. It's yeah. Right from the opening clip, it is just one of the more wild shows on TV. And that's set in Greenwich, is the idea? His, uh, his, his, Damian Lewis's his business is in Westport, Connecticut, Westport. actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, and Chuck Rhodes, who's Paul Giamatti's character, is the U.S. Attorney General. So and he's, he's kind of building his case against Bobby Axelrod, who's this guy who came from the streets. He went to Hofstra University and, you know, basically just made a ton boy, of money. Yes. Yeah. And the characters are just so rich. Uh, each of their, each of them have great uh, wives. The female actresses do a great job. Uh, Ma Malin Ackerman is uh, Damian Lewis's wife, and Maggie Siff is G Giamatti's wife, and she's the psychologist at Damian Lewis's company. So there's a little bit of conflict of interest. I would say. Yeah. I, I don't think that in real life that would go. No, I know. That's when you watch it, you're like, this can't actually happen. But it's a great watch, and uh, if you have some time over the weekend, I highly recommend you get caught up on that. Also check the big short in theaters. Uh, we're going to head to our first commercial break. When we come back, we got Glenn Colello coming on to talk about the film Consumed, which is going to be uh, showing in Trumbull next week. Yes. Darien Sport Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sport Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking, 
1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. In Pound Ridge since 1993, the Wine Connection is one of America's best wine shops. Visit our beautiful store for the greatest in wine and knowledgeable service. With wonderful values from around the world to collectibles for your cellar, we are your one-stop source. Visit our online shop at wineconn.com and make sure to sign up for email updates. With great offers, new arrivals, and special events, don't miss all the action at The Wine Connection, including tastings every weekend. The Wine Connection, located at 32 Westchester Avenue, Pound Ridge, New York. Do you do a lot of running around but get nowhere when you're buying a car? Visit Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram for the one-stop buying experience and stop spinning your wheels. It's the new year. The to-do list is long and it's easy to feel pulled in many directions at once. Your professional, personal shoppers at Walter Stewart's are ready to check groceries off your list by shopping for you. Save extra time this year and spend it doing more important things. Great food and wine delivered to your home with the same day service. Shop Stewart's online at stewartsmarket.com. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Join us for Coffee Break weekdays at 11 to get the latest Connecticut news, weather, high school sports, and more. News doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break on the HAN Network. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. We're joined on the couch with Glenn Colello. Glenn, you are the co-owner of uh, Catch a Healthy Habit, right? Is that correct? Yes, it is. In yeah. Fairfield. And you've got a special movie premiere coming up uh, next Thursday in Trumbull. The movie's called Consumed. Um, it's a thriller, right, about it's, GMOs? It's tagged a thriller, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's very exciting. At Catch a Healthy Habit Cafe, we're a full-service, vegan, raw food cafe. Um, but we take a lot of pride in, in educating the community. And also, we, we believe that educating the community could inevitably create some more customers, too. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but we love showing documentaries. Um, we've shown probably two dozen, maybe even more documentaries over the time since we've been open. Um, this, is a, this is something different A new for us. adventure. This is yeah. not a documentary. This is actually this the is first... This is a 96 minutes, right? Yeah, this yeah. is the first film that solely specializes on the topic of... GMOs with like real deal director and a real deal actresses and Danny yeah. Glover's in the film and Anthony and Edwards yeah and so it's Victor Garber it's, it's quite a cast it's very exciting and again I have not seen the film other than the trailer oh so you're gonna you're gonna be yeah watching it for the first yeah, time I mean, so uh, it's yeah other cool. than um you know the film festivals and having the, you know shown this the screening before it's not really out there yet, and mm -hmm. it's a unique way of getting it out there through this company called Gather. Um, but yeah, it'll be the first time that, that we see it, and we've got a, a, a group from GMO uh, Free CT coming to speak about the film afterwards to, to answer questions, because this is not the, the solution, this, this movie. This raises questions. This raises questions. That's all Daryl and, and Zoe Lister-Jones wanted to do was, was raise, raise questions, because they knew to get this out there, they couldn't be pro, they couldn't be anti, they just needed to, to, to basically paint the, uh, the scene right. and, and create conversation. And, and I believe that it'll create a pretty interesting conversation. I've invited um, people who I know are, want to see this labeling, GMO labeling, and I've invited people who don't want to see, don't understand why there's so much fuss about the And you're the, the governor in your shop signing the GMO labeling bill, right? Yeah, the ceremonial signing, that, yeah, yeah, was, was where Daniel uh, Malloy came to the cafe, and that all stemmed from Tara Cook Littman. Tara Cook Littman, if I can just tell you the back end story to why we're shown consumed, is Tara Cook Littman's a mom of three mm -hmm. young children. She's a former New York City lawyer. And back in 2011, we brought Jeffrey Smith um, to speak in Fairfield. Jeffrey Smith is 
um, the founder of Institute for Responsible Technology, and he's been writing books and has also done his own documentary on how, how toxic, detrimental these GMOs are to our society. And um, so she sat in the seat, she listened to what Jeffrey said, and was completely consumed with needing to do something. And so from there, it started, the ball started rolling, she took it, she got some other moms together, she got some groups together, and being a lawyer, um, she figured out how to, how to go about this. How to this, make some actual How to change. make it happen. We, we yeah. had help from Representative Tony Wong, who came and He's sat down. He's been to our studio several times. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> he likes the camera. <laughs> um, so, so Tony came and really helped Tara understand what's gonna happen when you get to Hartford and what needs to be presented and how it needs to be presented. So he's instrumental in getting some of the, uh, the original, uh, or getting Tara to feel comfortable going in front of Hartford to get this done. So it, it was signed. Connecticut was the first state to sign a GMO labeling bill, which has a trigger. So we're not labeling anything until enough states around us um, sign bills of their so own. So it's a nearby, you kind of need cooperation from we, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, yeah, New York. Yeah, we, we do need cooperation, um, but Tara's in Hartford right now, or she would have came and joined me and, and been on the show, but she's in Hartford and they're still fighting to, to take the trigger clause away. Mm -hmm. And so it's still, it's still not a dead issue to, to get Connecticut labeling because in July of 2016, the labeling kicks in for Vermont. Oh, so okay. Vermont's gonna be, gonna be California required California turned anymore. this down, is that right? California turned it down. Three other states, who Florida, um, I believe there's one other state that had the ability to put it on the ballot, which Connecticut doesn't. Mm -hmm. Had the ability to put it on the ballot, um, they were turned down, and that just comes to the, the, uh, the marketing money that um, the, the big corporations have to convince the people voting that it's gonna, your food's gonna cost more if we have to label, and a, a litany of things that aren't necessarily proven to a be true. A little David versus Goliath type situation yeah, where you have to educate people versus the big corporations. Sort right. of and like the business movies we were just I know, talking yeah. about. I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, no, we're excited. Consume's going to be shown on the 25th of February, right, Marquee 16. Marquee 16 right in down Trumbull. Right road, yep. And, um, you know, we, we've kind of got about 50 or 60 tickets reserved as of now, but we know that the swell comes leading right up to the movie when when um, people know their schedules and they're gonna get there. So I'm actually expecting 125 people to come out to, That'd be to great. see this to and see this movie. And people who wanna get tickets can uh, go to your website, Catch a yeah, Healthy right, Habit? Yeah, right Right now the best place, catchhealthyhabit.com. Um, we have an event page and that's the feature event um, coming up for February. So you go there and you would click on a link to gather. And if I can talk about this in the, in the, in the sense of films, gather, G-A-T-H-R. They've given documentary filmmakers and, and other smaller filmmakers uh, an avenue to get their films out. Yeah, so it's really what happens is Gather process. does all the legwork. All I do is say, hey, I would like to show Consumed. Here, here's the, the dates I'd like to choose from. They set it all up with the theater, and then boom, they click off and say, you're good to go. Now, advertising, the, the problem is if, if, we don't, if you don't get enough people 10 days before the movie, then they shut it down so the theater yeah. can now go ahead and put a movie and advertise for that movie. So we tip the scale so we have enough. It's definitely shown the That's 25th good, yeah. at 730, and we're really excited about it. I have to ask, when Tara's in Hartford, does she wear that shirt, or is that just she, one that You know what? She has worn the shirt, and she's been um, asked not to wear it. So <laughs> she goes properly dressed. She looks great, and, and she, she says what she needs to say, and she's making things happen out in there in Hartford. And how long have you guys been wearing those shirts? Do you wear them at the cafe or no? Oh, yeah. I, get, I actually bought a, sta a shirt for each staff member. All right. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're big into the um, labeling of GMOs is very important going forward. Yeah. And people, what people can do is they can go out and they, could, um, they can call the representatives and, and get them to ask them to release the trigger here in Connecticut. Before we let you go, we're going to play the trailer for Consume for the people that are watching at home awesome. so they get kind of an idea what it's about. Sure. <coughs> hey, buddy. How was school? Good. Yeah, what happened? I showed everybody my new football cards. Yeah, do they like them? Yeah, I needed a QB, so I traded Hank Lewis. What's going on with your arm? Uh, nothing. Why do you keep scratching it like that? I don't know. Stop scratching. 
me look at it. Oh my god, Garrett. This is really bad. Consumed is a dramatic thriller set in the world of genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. We had our world premiere at the 2015 Los Angeles Film Festival. I found it really entertaining. I found the story um, kind of a fun thriller ride of this journey of this woman and her son trying to figure out what's going on. And I love that it played in the background in the, within a world in which, you know, I'm a parent of four kids and something I care about, which is what are we eating and where does it come from? I thought this was an important story. It's a story that was a narrative, not simply a documentary. You've seen enough documentaries, you know, You've seen enough books on it, but something that gives us a sense that we can begin to, to add to the collection of information as a movement that's building right under us right now around our food and food safety. I mean, I guess this is the first sort of, um, uh, you know, fictional uh, uh, depiction of what's going on. And, and I think uh, given the script and the people involved in the film, it's going to be very powerful. It's a conversation that I, pe I feel like people are having more and more now, but no one has really tackled it. And it's, and it's our children. What are we putting in our children? What are we putting in ourselves? If anything, you know, we can get labels on, on food. We can get labels on things to, to get the, the general public um, you know, information that they don't have right now. As opposed to a traditional theatrical release where the film may be only in a few cities, we wanted to take a different approach. That's why we decided to partner with Gather. Now anyone in America can see the film in a theater near you. Click on See the Film on the film's website, consumedthemovie.com. Type in your zip code and see if the film is playing near you. For a screening to happen, we need enough tickets to be reserved in advance. Help us start a larger conversation about GMOs by hosting a screening of Consumed in your city or by attending one. All you have to do is spread the word to your friends and your community. With your help, people can see this movie as it was meant to be seen. Help us make an impact. And a very informative trailer that is. You get little, you get hear hear from the actors, but you also get to hear a little bit about Gather and kind of that that movement and how that's happening. Yeah, it's so got I, a lot of information there. Yeah, I mean, I recommend all your your watchers and and, and listeners to see Gather. And there's no, another company called Tug T U G G, mm -hmm. and they have amazing, probably movies that need to be distributed better but aren't, and and they're available um, to watch. And that note, we've uh, the cafe signed up to show another movie on April 5th. Not sure where it'll be, maybe Fairfield, maybe Trumbull again, but it's called The Seed of Time. Seed of Time. And it's talking about how seeds, um, you know, are, are becoming struggle with all the GMOs and, and, and whatnot. So now they've got a gentleman out in um, Austria, I believe, has a big seed bank. And it's all about him and the seed bank and what he's doing to collect these seeds in case we have a situation where you know we're out of seeds yeah, and we need this is a documentary or it's a, this next so Danny one, Glover's not going to play the organic no farmer. he won't play the yeah. organic farm in that one but seeds of time is April 5th all right perfect Good. yeah and then of course consumed is coming to Trumbull next Thursday seven o'clock marquee 16 100 quarry road yeah. Glenn thank you so much for coming in thanks we a lot for having me this we was appreciate awesome. it yeah yeah great it's going to be an interesting movie yeah Definitely we're looking forward have to, to it. check it out thank you we're going to head to our second commercial break. We'll be right back on uh, Arts and Leisure. Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year after hip surgery. 
and playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. The construction is incredible, whether it's the floors, the fireplace, the moldings, the lighting, it's as peaceful as my home was in the middle of the woods. It feels like a house. It does not feel like a condo or a townhome. I feel like I'm in my house. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. The 2016 FCAC playoffs are coming to the HAN Network. We'll have all of the big games beginning February 23rd on the court and on the ice. And we'll have it all live and streaming HD. This is your home for the 2016 FCAC Winter Championships. The HAN Network. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. We've got a couple weekend events for you before we sign off. Yeah. Sally, what do you have for us? Lots going on this weekend. One of the interesting things that's opening is um, an exhibit called Look at Me, Recording and Sharing Ourselves, which is uh, at the Fairfield Museum. And this is a showcase of self-portraits. So selfies. Selfies. Uh, the one the one we're showing right now obviously is, is a, a fairly dated one, but um, that one dates from, I think, 1810. But uh, the, fir the world's first selfie. Well, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, painting silhouettes, early photographs, miniatures from the Fairfield area. So these are all familiar faces to someone in Fairfield. Yeah, people, people have been around the state. Yeah. That opens uh, today, and um, there's going to be an opening reception after dark event next Thursday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. at the museum, which is at 370 Beach Road. If you want more information, visit Fairfield fairfieldhistory.org or call them at 203-259-1598. There's also a, a portraiture show opening at the uh, New Canaan Library's H. Pelham Curtis Gallery and that's um, involving seven artists and they, they do their uh, portraits in a variety of media from drawing to collage to photography. Do they have selfies or no? Um, or just more traditional? They didn't say whether they had selfies or not, but um, contemporary portraiture could be just about anything. And Sounds like it uh, yeah. lends itself to pretty much anything, yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're having an opening reception next Thursday also, uh, 6 to 8 p.m., so you're going to have to choose between <laughs> selfies or contemporary portraits, I guess. Uh, the library's at 151 Main Street in New Canaan, and if you want more information, visit newcanaanlibrary.org, or you can call them at 203-594-5000. Now, I've got to give a lot of credit to the Maritime Aquarium for this next one. This yes. is probably my favorite event that we've ever talked about, a spam carving contest. There that you is, go. There you go, right there. And it's a part of the aquarium's uh, plans for a Long Island Sound luau this weekend, which is going to be February 20th through the 21st, um, bringing a sunny selection of special activities, crafts, tropical drinks, and more to guests who are going to be coming in from the cold. One of the highlights will be an inflatable surfing machine. Think of that. Yeah, that's almost better than the Spam itself. I don't itself. know if you're supposed to wear board shorts to, to uh, participate. That yeah. Fun. How do you carve Spam? That's the real question. Carefully. Yeah. <laughs> and this is all free with the aquarium admission. That's pretty cool. Such um, a deal. The carving contest runs from 1 to 3 each day, and there's a $5 fee for that. Um, aquarium admission is, of course, $19.95 for adults, $17.95 for youth, and seniors get in for $12.95. For more information, visit MaritimeAquarium.org or call 203-852-0700, extension 2206. So unfortunately, we couldn't have Dave Sigworth on our show today, but yeah. I'm sure he's 
plenty busy with the spam carving. He's, he's probably busy, <laughs> he did busily the, carving. He did what we just saw the seal? He did. He That's did do the cool. seal. I believe so. Um, so if you want to see a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Ooh. Leon Russell. There you go. He's going to be at Fairf yeah, Fairfield Theater Company oh, okay. FTC. at the warehouse on Saturday night. Doors open at 7 and tickets are $45. That's fairfieldtheater.org, 203-259-1036. Silvermine Arts Center is extending the Valentine's Day season one more weekend. Uh, Sunday they're hosting a program featuring cellist Matt Hamovitz and yep. British a cappella trio Voice. They'll collaborate on Bach, Shakespearean sonnets, and much more. The concert will begin at 3 um, in the Sarah Victoria Hall at the center um, located at uh, 1037 Silvermine Road in New Canaan. T tickets are 60 bucks. They include champagne, chocolates, and a lot more. For more information, visit silvermineheart.org. Or no, Silvermine Art, sorry. I was thinking Your hard Valentine's. For, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Call 203-966-9700. Two, uh, and finally, um, an ice skating rink on the stage at the Ridgefield Playhouse. They're having the uh, Winter Solstice Ice Spectacular there on Sunday, February 21st at 4 o'clock. And these are professional skaters who will be doing all the things that professional skaters do. Tickets are $40. You can order them at ridgefieldplayhouse.org or you can call 203-438-5795. That stage is not that big. I wonder I how know, they fit. I know. It's going to be a little tight. <laughs> yeah, but, a little tight. And, and I'm not clear how, how thick the ice is and what do they do if they start sliding off the edge. But My question is why wouldn't they just have it out on the baseball field outside? Wouldn't that be a lot safer? Possibly. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. They do this. <laughs> I'm not going to challenge the playoffs. They know what they're doing. They're a great organization. Yeah. We love having them on our show. That's all for the weekend events. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Next week, tune in. We're going to have our HAN Oscar extravaganza. Yes. We're 10 days away. We're going to have Mark Green back on the couch with us to review all the nominees. We're going to do predictions and uh, just go over the full list. Our wish lists. Our wish lists. Everything. And it'll be a lot of fun. That's it. Uh, next Thursday at 2 p.m. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.